Okay, welcome to our first podcast for thermochemistry. It covers heat flow as well as endothermic and exothermic reactions. And if you take a look at your unit organizer, these red boxed areas are the first sections we'll be covering. As we go through this section, there's four things you want to keep in mind. You want to be able to explain how energy, heat, and work are related. You want to know how does heat flow from one body to another. You want to be able to understand what is heat flow affected by and how you can tell an endothermic from an exothermic reaction. Now, thermochemistry is the study of heat changes that occurs in chemical reactions. And thermochemistry, thermo means heat. And so the heat in chemical reactions is supplied by the bonds uh, along with the chemicals and the molecules um, that take place in the chemical reactions. This is considered the chemical potential energy. And so when these bonds break and they reform, that's when you get energy being absorbed and released. Okay, now what energy is, the definition of energy is the capacity for doing work or supplying heat. And energy is weightless, odorless, and tasteless. Okay, so it's kind of hard to detect, unlike matter, which takes up space and has mass. The way we're able to um, know energy is, it exists is we can detect energy because of the effects on its surrounding. And just like the law of conservation of mass, we have the law of conservation, conservation of energy, which says energy can neither be created nor destroyed. It's always conserved. Okay, so just like mass, it can't, we can't have it disappear. It's always going to be conserved in these chemical reactions. Now, heat is a form of energy, and heat can be transferred from one object to another when you have a temperature difference between things. Okay, a lot of times we kind of think of heat and temperature being equal, but that's not the case. In science, they're very different concepts. So heat is a form of energy, whereas temperature has its own definition <laughs> that we'll come to in a moment. Now, heat can flow, all right? Heat can be transferred. And heat flow is affected by the motion of molecules, all right? So it's the, mo the motion of the molecules that's going to affect the heat flow. And heat flow always travels the same way. It goes from higher temperatures to lower temperatures. And that's a really important point you want to know. It will definitely be asked on a quiz or a test. So if you're holding an ice cube in your hand, like here in the picture, the ice cube is not making your hand cold. In fact, cold does not exist. You only have a lot of heat or a little heat. All right, It's just varying degrees of the amount of heat energy that you have. So when you're holding an ice cube in your hand, your hand feels cold because the heat from your hand is being transferred to the ice cube. So what you're feeling is the heat leaving your hand and so there's less heat in your hand and we interpret this as a feeling of cold. And then that heat actually does work on the ice cube and changes the bonds within it and so that ice cube then melts and the solid water, the ice, becomes liquid water. So it's important to know, heat will always change from, it's always going to travel from high temperatures to low temperatures. Now, temperature is the measure of the average kinetic energy of atoms or molecules. Okay, so that's the definition of temperature. Those molecules are always moving, all right? That's the kinetic energy, the energy of movement. The molecules are always moving. If they're moving really fast, as opposed to another set, well then we say those are at a higher temperature. They have a higher average kinetic energy. If the molecules are moving slowly, then it's going to have a lower temperature. <coughs> now we're used to measuring temperature with thermometers, okay? And that's very common. But you can't measure heat with a 
with a thermometer. Okay, in fact, we really can't measure heat at all. We can only measure changes in heat. We can measure the changes when heat's absorbed into something or when it's released. So there's only two ways heat can go. You can absorb it, you can take it in, or you can release it out into the surroundings. And so this brings us to our two definitions for this chapter, two, of, two more of our definitions for this chapter. You have endothermic reactions. And endo means in, okay? And so endothermic reactions absorb heat. Well, there's four different ways you know that you have an endothermic reaction. Heat is going in. That's one way you know. You will have a um, heat as a reactant. So in a chemical equation, heat would be on the left side of the arrow. So heat on the left side of the arrow as a reactant before your products. The other way you know you have an endothermic reaction is if your value for Q is positive or your value for delta H is positive. And Q is an abbreviation for heat. And along with delta H, delta H it means change in heat. So we're going to talk more about Q in the next section. But if you have a number for Q that's positive, that's a way to tell you have an endothermic reaction. And then the other way you can tell you have an endothermic reaction is if it feels cold or feels cool to the touch. So when you're doing a reaction and you feel a test tube get cold or the beaker get cold, you know you're working with an endothermic reaction. Now exothermic reactions, exothermic reactions release heat. You can think of exo as an exit. So this is heat out. If you're giving heat out, heat is a product. If you're giving away heat, then your Q is negative or your delta H is negative. And then if we're doing an observation in a lab, it's going to feel warm or hot to the touch. Okay, and we have had done some, we have done some reactions where you guys have felt uh, the test tubes and they feel hot to the touch. You know, this burning of the match and the bomb here explosions are all exothermic reactions. Okay. So that's it for the introductory section here. What you need to do now is to take your unit organizer and add to it. Okay, this is your checking for understanding as part of your notes. So here, like under endothermic reactions, you want to draw down and say, okay, put in a little bubble and fill in that endothermic reactions feel cold or endothermic reactions have a positive Q or endothermic reactions have heat as a reactant. So you should use your notes to fill in these parts of your unit organizer. And if you have questions, you can ask me about that in class.